Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome here in this video. So this video in particular is about the consumers and the incentives. Okay, so we uh, for the last week's discussion, we discussed about the demand schedules and how we plot the demand schedules of uh, this is the we call the, the demand curves. Okay, also we have the uh, it's just for the individual okay so we also we plotted the market or aggregated demand curves okay also uh, also we discuss about the supply curves or supply schedules and also we have the market uh, supply curves and uh, these two demand and the supply if we combine that in or in equilibrium we put them in equilibrium so so the intersect or intersection so for example if they meet for each other it's because uh, the the demand is always downward slope and for the supply is always upward slope okay now so today we're going to discuss about the consumers and the incentives so for the question about this and uh, uh, by the way I forgot I would like to to thank the book that I'm, I use for this discussion about microeconomics and uh, this one the question the first question is about this one would a smoker quit the habit for five thousand a month okay so incentives for us are mm, uh, very important for example yung mga studyante po natin uh, studyante bata so if they receive incentives for the positive reinforcements ay mapaparsa sila gawin yung isa mga bagay so it affects our behavior or their behavior because of the incentive so for this question would a smoker quit the habit for 5,000 a month? Okay, so would you do that? If you are if you are an addict uh, smoker, okay, so would you receive? Okay, would you accept the incentive every month? And you're going to receive 5,000. Okay, now so later on we will answer that question. Okay, so for this chapter five the outline is okay the buyer's problem putting it all together from the buyer's problem to the demand curve consumer surplus and demand elasticity so for the for this video we're going to discuss this four topics and this one the demand elasticities is okay we're going to discuss this in the next video or discussion okay so because this is broad to discuss and it has a lot more key terms to be discussed okay now as a uh, as part of the buyer's problems okay so this set of cakes for example if you see this in uh, what do you call this one goldilocks okay for example you see this uh, cakes for your for example you will give this cake for someone special someone now you will depend on the your uh, you will depend on your preferences okay or something you like and the price itself the price of the cake also your budget okay so what I am am I going to use for this is depending na lang sa tatlong factors na yun or ingredients that uh, we're going to discuss in the next slide now economists would agree with you by buyer's problem we mean how consumers arrive at the choice as to what to purchase so there are in fact three necessary ingredients okay necessary ingredients to the buyer's problem okay so I've mentioned what you like 
price, prices of goods and services and how much money you have to spend okay now for the next uh, this one if you know this three ingredients okay it will lead to a set of a powerful implication so this is going to be your decision para mapili mo yung alternatives na yun, mapili mo yung optimum, okay? So, because we are optimizing from those alternatives that are available, okay? Now, so, what you choose and its consequences, so I will give you example for this, okay? So, we have the absolutes and percentages, okay? I will give you an example like like for example if the television is like for a thousand nine hundred ninety pesos so save more and then five thousand pesos malapit sa taon nyo, okay along sa ano across the community okay now the next one is for yung calculator okay so yung difference nung dalawa ng television is 10 pesos just only 10 pesos Okay, and then, yung sa calculator, bibili ka ng calculator, for example, sa, sa community nyo, across the community, it's 100, uh, 100 pesos. And then, yung sa save more is 110 pesos. Okay, so, you have the option. Okay? Napili mo na, for example. Napili mo na. And then, the difference is between those uh, examples okay it's just only 10 pesos so you're going to discuss about the so we're talking about uh, absolutes and percentages okay the percentages is that yung uh, 4,990 pesos and then 10 pesos it's just only the difference is just only 0 0.02 okay so it's just a small okay now for the for the 100 pesos okay for example and then yung 100 uh, 100 uh, sorry 100 and for example 50 pesos so the the difference is that the percentage change changes in the price is 50% yung difference. Okay? Now, ganun po yun. So, we have the marginal benefits that we we uh, identify because of the percentages and the absolutes. Okay? Now, so, a budget set is the set of all possible bundles of goods and services that can be purchased with a consumer's income. So, in another term, budget set is a budget constraint. So, uh, yung, uh, yung tagline ng isang uh, Cornetto ice cream, for example, hanggang saan aabot yung 20 pesos mo. Okay, so this is the same with the budget set. Okay, budget constraint. This is the possibilities kung ano yung pwedeng bilhin pwedeng uh, ano yung quantity na pwedeng bilhin okay for those goods and services okay so we will give some graphs and examples para ma picture out nyo now so the budget set and the budget constraint for your shopping spree okay so for example we have the four bundles on the budget constraint now for, we have the bundles a b c d and uh, we have the quantity of sweaters and quantity of jeans so th this is just only an example okay like uh, you have 300 dollars on hand okay yung sa kamay mo so yung 300 dollars na yun igagastos mo lang para sa sweaters and jeans na magkaiba ba yung benefits nilang dalawa ha so we're going to discuss later on kung Ano nga ba yung marginal benefits? Okay, now we're going to plot those, uh, this table, exhibit 5.1. 
this one okay so 12 this is the y-axis and the x-axis this one is for the sweater and this one is for the jeans okay now you have 12 so we were going to put the dot here 12 0 okay the next one is 8 for the sweaters and 2 for the jeans now for the next one for the bundle C we have the 4 sweaters and 4 for the jeans now for the next one is uh, 0 for the sweaters and 6 for the jeans kaya nandito siya so yan po yung uh, budget set ng isang tao okay, or isang individual okay now for the next one is that ito na yung marginal benefit so we have for example if we have a budget like 1200 okay so this uh, for example in quantity is 12 okay so for the first time that you're going to buy a sweater so ang ibig sabihin mas mataas yung benefits marginal benefits po yeah marginal benefits so kung first time mong bumili ng first time mong bumili ng uh, sweater, so ang ibig sabihin, mas mataas po yung benefits. So, so, yung jeans, marginal benefits ng jeans at sweaters ay, ano po ah, mas mataas yung benefits ng jeans sa sweaters. Okay? So, this is just only an example. Yung marginal benefits natin ay nilagay lang natin sa pera. So, yung value ng uh, benefits ay i-convert natin sa pera. Okay, para ma-picture out natin kung ano yung uh, marginal benefits. Kung ano, pipili tayo ng optimum. Okay, kung ano yung optimum para sa kung ilan yung bibili natin sa sweaters at ilan yung bibili natin sa jeans. Okay, now for example, sa so unang bili mo ng sweater, you have the marginal benefits like 400. Now you will divide it by 100. So, the marginal benefits per peso spent is 4 pesos, okay? Now, for this one, uh, the second quantity or the second item for the sweater, so, syempre, bababa na siya sa 400 pesos. So, benefits in another term is satisfaction, okay? Babawasan lang natin yung satisfaction mo for the first quantity, so, the second quantity becomes 340. Now, we will add this benefits, this marginal benefits, dito, sa so total benefits. Okay? So, 400 plus 340 is 740. And so on and so forth. Now, your budget is just 1,200. Now, ano yung uh, pinakamalaking total benefits na makukuha mo na sakto sa budget mo. Now, the bolded item here or uh, columns or row, sorry, this one is 6 items for the sweaters and uh, 2 pairs, uh, 3 pairs for the jeans. So, in a total of 1,200. So, yung total benefits mo na marireceive is eto, two, uh, nasa 3,000. So, you will add this benefits, 1,720 plus 1,640. So, this is the total benefits. For the next one is, an optimizing buyer makes decision at the margin. So, we discussed that, okay, about the about the absolutes and percentages, we identified the margin. Also, we identified the margin dito sa buyer's problem natin. So, we identified the marginal benefits. Now, what if the price changes? Okay, so for the law of demand, okay, if the price uh, rises, so the quantity becomes low. Okay? So, kapag yung quantity ay tumaas naman, yung price natin ay bababa. So, opposite lang. 
So, because they are negatively related. Okay? So, for for example lang, tumaas yung, uh, what if uh, the price changes kung tumaas o bumaba? So, let's find out that. Okay? So, for this one, so for the exhibit 5.3, we have this one. So, kanina, uh, the sweaters for the quantity of the sweaters is 12, okay? And for the jeans is 6. Now, if the increase in the price of sweater, if there is an increase in the price of sweaters, so obviously, bababa po yung ating quantity. Okay, kasi po, tumaas yung price. Now, it moves inward. So, we call this as inward pivot in the budget constraint from a price increase. Now, what if the price decrease? Now, so, syempre, tataas yung ating quantity. Okay, so we call that as rightward pivot in the budget constraint from a price decrease. Now, syempre, so because of the law of demand, if we de uh, if the price decreases, so yung quantity natin ay tataas po. Okay? So it moves to the right uh, right side of this line. Okay? So we call this as rightward pivot. Okay? Now, as uh, one of the three ingredients of uh, the buyer's problem, for example, the first one is the price changes, and the second one, yung budget natin. What if yung budget natin is nagbago? Okay? So, we have the income changes. The next one is, uh, I will show you the exhibit 5.5, an outward shift in the budget constraint from an increase in income. Okay? So, kapag nag-double, o oh, example lang ha, nag-double yung ating income, so, syempre, mas malaki yung mabibili natin. Mas marami yung mabibili natin. Okay? So, it moves outward or to the right side of this line. Okay? So, mas mataas po yung possible or bundle set na pwede nating ibili sa budget na yun. Okay? Now, for example, yung 300 na doble na 600. Okay? Now, so, I will show you the demand curve. For example, kay Maylin. Okay? The demand curve of Maylin for the jeans. So, so syempre, ito yung mga prices natin. Ha? Binago ko lang yung prices in peso. Okay? Kanina kasi in dollars. Ngayon, uh, sa peso naman. Now, for the possibility na possible mong mabili for the 150 pesos is 4 pairs of jeans. Now, for 200 pesos, we have the 3 pairs of jeans, 250 pesos for 2 pairs of jeans, 300 for 1 pair of jeans. Now, we have to plot that, that table in this graph. Okay, 1. 2, 3, and 4. So, make sure it is aligned because your uh, yung line na ma, na ma create nyo is parang uh, matatabingi lang yan. Okay? Depende na lang kung gumagamit kayo ng uh, Microsoft Office. Okay? So, for this one, this is the demand curve of Mylin. Okay? This is the demand of Mylin. Okay? So, picture out natin ito kasi gagamitin din natin para mamaya. Okay? Now, for the consumer surplus, okay? So, for the consumer surplus is the difference between what a buyer is willing to pay. So, kung uh, ano yung demand curve ni Mylin, okay, for a good and what the buyer actually pays. Kung ano yung uh, set na market price, okay? So, pwede pong magbago po yun. So, we're going to identify 
the revenue the possible revenue and the actual revenue okay now we're going to compute the consumer surplus for example ha ngayon for uh, mailing okay for mailing so yung demand curve niya is eto etong four dots na to okay so the market price is 200 pesos okay so we're going to put this is the competitive equilibrium price okay so ngayon we're going to identify the height of the demand curve of mailing and the market price okay now for this one the expected price or demand curve of mailing for the first quantity is 300 pesos so the market price is 200 pesos so therefore the peso benefit or marginal benefit is 100 pesos okay that's the height of of that first quantity okay so mas mataas now for the second uh, demand curve or demand schedule of of mailing is 250 pesos okay 250 pesos and the demand uh, the market price is to uh, 200 pesos so therefore bumaba sa 100 yung kanyang marginal benefit na naging 50 pesos na lang and then the third one is obviously is zero walang benefits okay now just imagine or picture uh, just imagine atong triangle uh, 1 2 3 so para ma picture out natin lalagyan ko ng triangle para makita natin so this what we call consumer surplus okay what if uh, yung market wide consumer surplus na tayo okay now so we are going to make uh, the to make the quantity in millions because it's market naman okay now so this uh, x axis in millions ha, yung quantity and the price okay so for the consumer surplus para ma-identify natin yung base ng triangle and yung height ng triangle we're going to count the the lines here from the bottom to the top okay so we count natin 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay so 6 okay so bibilang bibilangin natin sa uh, base ng graph okay so start tayo from this one so count 1 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so meaning to say the height of the triangle is 250 pesos okay so the base of the triangle we're going to count 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so the quantity sold in millions is 60 million okay para makalculate natin kung ano yung consumer surplus yung uh, triangle na to i-multiply natin yung dalawa okay 60 millions okay times or multiplied by 250 pesos okay so this is the formula okay basic triangle multiplied by height of the triangle divided by 2 so that is the consumer sur surplus okay so the total of 60 million to 250 pesos is and divided by 2 sorry so equals 15 million okay so 15 million is the consumer plus what if the question is nagtaas yung price okay so the expected revenue for the jeans is 15 million kapag nag increase ng price 
So, ibig sabihin, liliit po yung ating triangle or yung consumer surplus or expected revenue natin. Okay? Now, for this PowerPoint, this one, okay, sorry, uh, th this is uh, 15 million, not 7.5 million. Okay. Uh, this one, if if the market price 200 pesos, okay, tumaas siya ng 250 pesos, ang ibig sabihin ay lumiit din yung triangle. Okay? Yung height ng uh, demand. Okay? Now, from this, okay, ikakunta natin, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4 na lang yung height ng triangle, yung actual consumer surplus. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it becomes, from 250, it becomes 200. Okay, and then, 1, 2, 3, 4, so the quantity sold in millions becomes 40 million. Okay. Now, 200 multiplied by 40 millions divided by 2 is 8 million. Okay? So, the difference or uh, marginal cost, okay? So, yung difference nung dalawang yun is 8, ah, uh, sorry, 7 million. So, the lost consumer surplus is 7, ah, uh, ah, uh, Sorry ha. Uh, 8 million yung nawala sa, yung nawala sa expected revenue. Okay? From uh, 15 million and uh, naging 8 million, ang nawala sa iyo is 7 million. How how many percentage is that? So we're going to calculate the 15 million divided by 8 million, okay? Fifteen million. Eight million divided by fifteen million. So the percentage is fifty three percent. Okay? So fifty three percent yung uh, marginal or the percentage of the price changes okay now for the next one is that uh, yung tanong ko kanina about the uh, if you receive an incentive every month kung magkikwit ka sa smoking so the effective because this is the experiment by the in my economist okay so they conducted this experiment so Yung incentive group, yung quit rate niya is mas mataas. Okay? Kesa sa non-incentive group. So, ang ibig sabihin po, mas effective yung pagbibigay ng incentives sa kung sino po yung grupo o kung sino yung pinag experiment po natin. Okay? Yung subject mismo. So, ganun po yun. Now, if you want to give incentives or positive reinforcements, mas effective po yun. So, because of the data. Okay po. Now, uh, for the next uh, discussions, it's all about the demand elasticities. So, just uh, imagine a rubber band. So, this uh, discussion, okay? So, it's the measure of the sensitivity of one economic variable to a change in another. Okay, kung eh, if it, it affects the other uh, variables, okay? So, we're talking about the measures of the sensitivity, okay? So, that's all for today.